this is Gravy Official on YouTube and today we are going to be doing a watercolor painting tutorial for Cotton Candy Sky. This is an example of something we'll be doing. We'll be enlarging this for our final painting. To kick things off, I just want to welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, it's really good to be here today on YouTube and I hope that you have fun with this tutorial today. So we are going to be doing a giveaway. Um, this is for the premium watercolor travel set by Grabby and it comes in this cute little bag. Um, it's very compact and easy to take with you. So to start off our giveaway, I want to say that this is open worldwide. Um, please just drop a paint palette emoji in the comments if you'd like to enter um, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. So let's show you what's in this travel watercolor set. So inside it has a swatch sheet so you can put the paints on there and check out what the colors do and how they look on paper and get to know those colors. Um, it comes with a pad of small watercolor paper which is perfect for getting started or taking with you to paint outdoors or for small projects at home. Comes with the paint palette and 12 paint colors. You can see I've used mine a lot already and something I enjoy about this travel watercolor set is that it has plenty of room for mixing your own colors here, which we will be doing today. And I'll help you get started with that. The other items that come with it this travel watercolor brush, which is very convenient if you're going to be painting somewhere other than your home, you can easily transport it and open it up and put it together. And then you're all ready to paint using that. Um, it does come with this plastic cover, which I like to keep and make sure that my brush stays nice. And then the travel set also comes with the woodless pencil and it's in a case here so it doesn't get your other items dirty in here. And then it comes with the sharpener and an eraser. So everything you need to get started um, with watercolor painting. So that is going to be for our giveaway today is the watercolor travel set by Gravy. So drop a paint palette emoji in the comments if you'd like to enter. This is for worldwide. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. So today, like I said, we will be painting a cotton candy sky over mountains. Here's an example of what we'll be doing. We'll be enlarging this today, so it won't be quite this small. I enjoy painting really small, um, which is something that I usually do. But to make it a little bit easier for beginners, we will be using uh, paper from the watercolor pad by Grabby. And this is a cold press paper. And you can actually find um, links to this in the chat if you're interested in um, picking up some of these supplies for yourself. So welcome, I'm in Colorado. My name is Chrissy Sparks. I've been painting for um, about 20 years now. Um, I enjoy painting with acrylics, watercolors, and I've dabbled a little bit with oil paints. Um, I'm very excited to be sharing some watercolor techniques today, and I hope that you will follow along. And, if you are, um, let us know. Um, where is everyone located today? I'm in Colorado and we've just had some snow the last few days and this last month has been full of snow. So we have been staying warm and on the days that it warms up above freezing, we've been trying to get out a little bit here and there. Um, so we're still doing our giveaway as people enter. If you want to enter to win the um, travel watercolor set by Grabby, go ahead and drop a paint palette emoji in the comments. Um, this is open to worldwide. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. So here's a look at the palette that comes with the watercolor travel set. It comes with a brush, it comes with um, all kinds of things to get you started, including paper, a cute little pad of paper. 
Um, there is audio. Sorry, this is our first stream, so we're trying to test things out. Somebody said that they are from... Oh, I see a watercolor palette. Awesome. So everyone can hear me. Please wave or leave a comment to let me know you can hear me, that the audio is working. If you can hear me out there, let me know. So we're giving away this watercolor travel set by Grabby. Um, it's very compact. It can fit into your pocket. It can fit into a backpack. I usually carry a backpack with me if I paint outdoors. And this fits into the small um, pocket of my backpack so I can easily store everything else that I need in it. Okay, welcome, welcome. I see people joining us now. Thanks for joining our YouTube Live. Let me know if you can hear me, if the audio is working. Can you say hi? Wave at me. Let me know if it's working. Let me know where you're from. I'd love to see where you're tuning in from. Welcome, Emma. And if I miss you, say hi again. I'd love to give you a shout out. Hi, Mimi Gross. Hi, Emma Gonzalez. Thanks for joining. Thumbs up, awesome. Oh, sweet journaling from Wales, UK. Thanks for joining. Good to have you here. Chris Ross Artworks, hello from New York. Thanks for joining us. So if you'd like to enter the giveaway, please drop a paint palette emoji in the comments. Oh, hello from Paris. Nice to have you, Emma from Paris. So this is a worldwide giveaway. Um, drop a paint palette in the emoji or a paint palette emoji in the comments if you'd like to win this paint palette travel set by Grabby. It's open worldwide, so make sure you enter and try to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello, Sheila from Arizona. Thanks for joining us. Good to see everyone still trickling in. It's really good to see you all. Florida, awesome. Welcome, Kathleen from Florida. Dot Andy, hi from Texas. Hello. My name is Christy Sparks. I'm located in Colorado and I'm here today with Grabby. We're doing a watercolor painting tutorial. It is aimed at beginners, but any level can join. And if you paint along with us today, let us know in the comments that you're painting along. If you decide to watch the replay, you can do that and share it with us what you make and be sure to grab us or to tag us on Instagram or Facebook. Um, Grabby Official is our name on there. Hello from Vermont. So drop a paint palette emoji in the comments if you'd like to win this Grabby watercolor travel set. It comes with this paint palette. You can see I've used mine quite a bit. It comes with this travel watercolor brush, an eraser, a woodless pencil, a sharpener, and it comes with this watercolor pad of paper to get you started. I've already used a lot of mine because I'm enjoying it so much. And today's uh, painting is actually done on that paper. But for today's final painting, we will be using the Grabby watercolor pad. It's a cold press pad. Um, so we can enlarge this. You can see how much larger that paper is and it'll be easier for people to paint. So that's what we're doing today is this cotton candy sky watercolor painting. Okay, so we're going to be picking our winner. Laura Smith says awesome. Hello from Washington. Carrie, thanks for joining us today. Vermont, wow, we have people from all over. All right, so let's pick our winner now. I'm glad everyone could join us. And when I announce your name, please let me know that you're here. All right, here we go. We've got um, Chris Ross Artworks. Are you here with us? You're the winner for the giveaway for this travel watercolor set from Grabby. Chris Ross Artworks. Give me a wave if you're still here. 
to claim your prize. Hello, thanks for joining. And thank you for everyone who entered the giveaway. It's really good to have you here. Awesome, Chris Ross, I see you, you're here. Okay, if you could please just um, let us know your Instagram handle um, and we can contact you. You'll get a, a message from Grabby um, for your shipping info. Yeah, congratulations, Chris Ross Artworks. Um, oh, Jean, hello from Brooklyn, New York. Thanks for joining us. Awesome to have you here. Great, okay. So now that we've done the giveaway, I appreciate you all joining us and entering that. Um, it's really fun to see who's going to win that. Um, I want to tell you that during this live stream today, we will be um, doing something special. Um, everybody that makes a purchase during this live, you will get a free Grabby tote bag with your purchase today. So we're going to have the link in the comments for shopping if you are interested in trying out any of the products shown. Um, it will take you to a page that shows everything I'm using today. Um, but you can also explore the site and see if there's anything else that you're interested in. So make sure you follow the link in the comments if you'd like to shop live today and get that free grabby tote bag with your purchase today. And that link is only good for um, getting that free gift during the live stream today. Um, so let's get it started. I'm going to be telling you a little bit about what we're doing. We're doing the candy, um, cotton candy sky painting today. Make sure you can see that. It's basically some um, pink and blues, kind of fading up into some dark starry sky. Um, below we're having some darker mountains kind of give a bit of contrast to that. And this is going to be helping you to learn how to make some colors. Um, if you don't have the exact color that you need in your paint palette, you can usually mix your own and get that color that you are wanting. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Um, and also, um, just so you know, we are using the Gravy watercolor pad. It's cold pressed paper. And you can uh, find this at the link in the comments if you'd like to try it. Um, but for today's tutorial, I'll be using this larger paper to kind of make it easier for people to see what we're doing. And um, if you'd like to give a shot at painting smaller, you can. This is typically, I like to paint small and I started out painting that way, um, but it can be very challenging to use tiny brushes and get those tiny details in there, especially with watercolor. Um, as you learn to control it better on paper, um, it does get easier, so I would recommend starting out on a larger paper and kind of working your way down to see um, how you feel about it and how things work for you. So I'm going to be flipping the camera, um, show you my desk, and we will kick it off. And again, let me know if you're joining along. And I would love to know um, your thoughts during it and any questions you have. Um, Megan says, oh my gosh, I kept refreshing Insta and didn't even notice it was on YouTube. Yes, today is our YouTube live. So thanks for coming over here. It's really good to see you. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Okay, so let's switch the camera around. And here's my art desk. So I'm going to have this um, painting here. I try to have it in view so that you can see and get a good idea of um, what we're doing in case you feel um, like you need a, a bit more direction on um, you know what we're going for that will help you out so i have a piece of my watercolor paper already taken out this is the cold press watercolor paper from grabby you can find this at the link in the comments and um, again if you um, are interested in trying out any of these if you shop today during the live at the link that's in the comments then you will be able to get a free grabby tote bag with your purchase today um so gail says how do i find the list of items you are using when i hit the site it doesn't come up so i will go over the items that i'm using um, but the link for shopping will actually take you um, to all of the items in the shop that i'm using today so if you click click that it will take you and show you all of the items. And then we will be posting on 
um, in the description of this for replay as well as on Instagram um, to give you that list. So to get started, um, we're going to be getting our watercolors, getting everything set up. You want it to be within reach so that you can work with um, your paper pretty quickly. Watercolors can dry um, fairly quick. So if you are mixing colors like we will be doing today, you want to make sure that that area is all prepped and ready to go and all of your supplies are on hand. So I have a pencil. I have the two brushes we'll be using today, which are from the Grabby 11 piece miniature detail paintbrush set. We have size four and size 10 today. Um, that set does come with lots of different sizes, which I really enjoy using. Um, specifically, I love using the very small one um, for my details. I do a lot of starry details and that's perfect for that. Um, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use um, the larger brushes for subtle star details along with painting the mountains and blending that sky color right there. Okay, so we have um, our pencil, we have everything ready. Um, so because I'm going to be working with a circle shape on our paper, um, I sometimes like to use items that are easily available um, to make these shapes. So I today will be using one of my glass jars that I use for rinse water. That's why it's covered in paint. <laughs> um, it is dry and I will be using that to trace my circle on my paper. Um, this does not have to be perfect. It's just kind of getting an idea for the shape that you want. I'll show you this up close. My, my circle is not perfect, but overall, I really love the look of working in this shape and the effect that it gives with the, the starry sky kind of like bleeding into, um, you know, that colorful cotton candy gradient right here. So let's start off with making a shape. If you do not have something um, circular to shape, uh, to trace onto your paper, you can just paint the entire paper. I do have an example of that. Um, you can go all the way up to the edge if you'd like. Um, but today I want to work within a circle. So um, it's up to you what you wanna do. You can also trace a different shape if you have something else on hand. I just really enjoy this white border along the edge. Okay, so I'm going to look at my paper and kind of just do the best I can to get it, you know, even, evenly situated on there. And when you trace, please make sure that you don't press too hard. Um, you want this to just be a very light circle. And in case you mess up, that's why you have an eraser on hand. As long as you keep your, your shape very light, it should be fairly easy to erase. So we're tracing this circle and getting that how we want. And don't worry if you have several lines, I'll show you what mine looks like. Um, with watercolor, it can bleed over, over the line. And I think that having a little bit of um, loose structure can be very appealing. So if you can see, there's a few places where I, I kind of made the line kind of double it over and just kind of got the general idea. Um, someone says, oh, good tip. I always push too hard. I have learned this the hard way. <laughs> um, kind of messed up and then you have to get a whole new sheet of watercolor paper. So just start out very light. Um, Kathy Burton says, what is and why do you use cold pressed paper? Um, so cold pressed paper is a bit smoother. Um, I'm going to hold it close so you can see the texture. There's a little bit of texture there, but it's a lot smoother than um, um, some of the other papers. So this is kind of something when you're starting out with watercolors is I would recommend trying out cold press and hot press papers to see uh, what texture you enjoy working with. The texture on the paper will help uh, the paint to spread across the paper and soak in in different ways. So you'll be able to experiment with that, um, with trying out different papers um, to see which one you prefer. And sometimes for different paintings, you might want a different effect. So having both on hand is something that's very nice. So you can pick from, from those um, to, get the, 
desired, you know, finished painting that you are hoping to get. All right, so let's start out. We have our circle drawn and um, it's centered enough to where if I think once it's painted, it'll, it'll feel nice um, where it's at. And we are going to uh, be starting the painting um, by picking up our number six brush. So again, this is the number six brush from the 11 piece miniature detail paintbrush set. And the link in the comments to shop live is down there. And if you click on that and you purchase something today during this live stream, you will get a free gravy tote bag with your purchase. So make sure you do that and get that free gift with your purchase. Okay, so today we are going to be doing a wet on dry technique. So that just means we're using wet paint on dry paper. Um, there might be some times during this painting that we do the wet on wet, which means wet paint on wet paper, but I will tell you when we do that so that you can more easily follow along and um, go through the steps correctly. Okay, so um, we are starting out getting our paintbrush wet We're going to be mixing um, some colors and kind of get them ready. I like to um, kind of situate my colors first and then I'll, we'll draw out the mountains. That way, after we draw the mountains, we'll kind of have a chance to start getting into our paint and kind of working all that across the page. So to mix our colors today, um, this pink that we're using is has a hint of orange to it. So I'm going to get my pink paint wet and bring some over to the mixing palette. And as you can see, I already have some here, so I'm going to be adding to that. So I'll show you what I do. I'm getting a lot of the pink over here. Make sure your brush is wet. You wanna get some of that paint on there. Then rinse your brush and grab some of the orange. We're not doing equal parts of orange to pink. We're doing a little bit of orange. So this is a pink color with an, an orange tint to it. And I'll hold that up so you can see. And right now it looks very dark and um, I mean, very just saturated, but as we add water to it, we'll get that, that light cotton candy pinkish color on our paper. So it is not quite as pink as this. It has a bit of orange mixed in. And if you need to just add a tiny bit of orange at a time, I would recommend doing that. And if you actually um, add too much orange, let me, let me show you what you can do. If it's just very orangey and it looks more like an orange like that, just rinse your brush really well and get some more pink and mix the pink into the orange and kind of just try to balance it out to a shade of of orangish pink that you like. So see, I'm back to that pink with just, just a hint of orange to it. All right, now that I have plenty of that mixed, I'm going to rinse my brush. Um, we're pretty much set for painting. Um, I'm gonna be using this um, pink with a little bit of orange mixed into it. We'll be using the light blue and also using the Payne's Gray. Um, if you do not have Payne's Gray, not everyone does in their palette, then you can use black. Just use it very sparingly because it can be, it can be, um, hard to, to kind of mix that and have it fade into the blue without making it muddy and, and overtaking that bright blue color. So let's rinse our brush and set it aside and let's draw out our mountains. My mountains are going to be based on some mountains here in Boulder, Colorado, which I live very close to. Um, and you can draw any mountains you want. You can even make up your own mountains. Here, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what we're doing. And let me know if you have any questions, um, and I'll try to answer them as we're going along. Um, someone says, I love using wet on wet when I paint. Yeah, I think that's a very nice way to get, um, you know, uh, different colors to blend. And also um, it does take some work to, to, to keep control over your paints, but once you have that 
initial understanding of how your paints go across your paper, it can be easier and easier to, to use wet on wet. Okay, so let's draw on our mountains. If you do not have a reference photo to go off of um, or a specific mountain range that you want to draw, just make up your own. Um, I would say just make sure that there's a few mountain peaks in there to give some nice contrasting shapes um, as a silhouette, you know, against this um, beautiful sky gradient. So that's really what we're looking for. So I'm going to start not quite in the middle, just a little bit below the middle. Um, someone says, me in the Midwest. Mountains? <laughs> um, that's okay. You can just make up your own or try to follow along with what I'm doing today. <laughs> okay, so let's kind of just lay in these mountains. They don't need to be perfect. The lines can kind of overlap like we did for this outline along the edge. Um, it's going to be covered up with, you know, this dark paints gray at the end. So that doesn't quite matter if you have sloppy lines or not. So my mountains today will be inspired by the Boulder um, Flatirons mountain range up in Boulder, Colorado. Um, I'm located about 20 minutes from there and it's always a very beautiful um, mountain range to see on the horizon when you're driving towards Boulder, Colorado, um, especially catching sunsets in that direction is really, really pretty. So that's kind of what inspired today's painting. So we have some mountain peaks. And don't worry about having like two straight of lines because I also wanna give the effect that there's, you know, some forest or some, some greenery here. So it's not gonna be just straight lines. So I'll hold this up so you can see kind of what I've done lightly. We have some mountain peaks, um, we have, you know, all the way across to the edge, um, and it's not a straight line. And you can also uh, fix this a bit when you start painting it in. Um, but for now, we're going to um, start getting our paint laid in to this painting. So I'm gonna set my pencil aside. We won't need that, most likely for the rest of the painting, unless there's something else that you want to kind of fix and clean up. Um, I am not worrying about erasing these extra lines here because I kind of like that uh, loose feeling for this, um, but it's totally up to you if you want, you know, yours to have more clean lines. Um, and remember, if you want to see what products I'm using, click on the links that are in the comments, and that will take you um, to a page where you can shop live. And all purchases that are made today during this live stream, you will get a free grabby tote bag with your purchase. Um, and your landing page, when you click on that um, shopping link, will take you to all of the products that I'm using today, including this travel watercolor set by Grabby, um, this 11 piece detail brush set, and also this watercolor pad, cold press watercolor pad that we are using for our paper today. All right. So we're going to take our largest brush, which today is a six. You can use whatever size you have. Um, I would recommend using at least a six because we want it big enough to be able to um, quickly fill our page. We're going to be working from the horizon up towards the sky. And then once the sky is drying, our first layer of the sky, we'll turn it back over and start working on our horizon, so on our mountains. Um, so we'll be having a few layers for the sky and a few layers for the mountains and we'll kind of switch off so that each of them has time to dry in between. Okay, so you're gonna want your brush, dip it in this color that you've already made. You do want it to be kind of um, watered down, so definitely swish that brush around in your water and fill up your, your brush with water first. And you can see I don't have a very bright color of paint here because there's a lot of water in my brush. So once you get onto the paper, um, you wanna turn it so you can work um, along this horizon and work up towards the sky. So we're gonna start out with our pink and go just right along the mountains. You'll see this is pretty dark. So since it's so dark, I'm going to get my brush wet and maybe just kind of give it a swish so it rinses a little off and then I'm going to get it right back in there before my paint dries 
sort of bring this paint up. So I'm working in sections right now. And I'm going to be dragging this paint and getting it wet again so it's not quite so dark and dragging it up towards the sky. You want it to get lighter and lighter. So as you are dragging it towards the sky, you can dip your brush back into the water and get right into that other edge of the pink and kind of work your way up and help it to fade out. And we are working fast today to be able to control this paint. So I dipped it into the paint again. I have a lot of water in my brush going along that edge of the mountains. And I'm quickly dragging this up towards the top of the sky before it dries. And that way we can have um, a more smooth transition to the blues that we'll be laying in momentarily. If you're following along today, please let us know in the comments so I know who is joining us. Um, so I do really like how dark the pink is right there. Um, the paint has kind of spread, you know, up this way as I'm dragging it. It's drying really nicely. Let me show you. I really like that texture. It's very pretty. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of darker paint over here. So lay in another um, thin layer of this pink orange over there so we can get that same effect. So I'm just dabbing it into the paint working a little at a time to see, um, you know, how much I need. That way you don't overdo it and get too much into your brush. You can add more, but with watercolors, it's, it's very hard if you add too much to take away from that. And then I'm just slowly blending it in. Okay. So I'm very happy with that. I'm going to rinse my brush and go over the very top of this pink right here. Because remember this, as we're working our way up, this is going to be fading into blue and then eventually kind of a midnight bluish black color. So I'm getting this pink, just pushing it towards the edge of my circle. And I am kind of prepping this edge right here, getting it wet and we're going to do a wet on wet technique. So if you prep your color that you're going to be blending into first with water, it will more easily accept that without creating harsh lines. So while this is wet, I'm going to quickly dip my brush into the water and grab a little bit of that blue, the light blue. And we are going to be um, turning our page more of this way, horizontal again. Um, so we're looking at the horizon, how it's going to be, and we're going to lay in some of that blue, starting from the top. Um, someone says, me, or, with all this unusual weather, all the mountains are snow-capped today. Oh, that would just be so pretty to look at and to get inspiration from. That's another thing that would be awesome to do, is um, some snow-capped mountains, a pretty sunset. So you can see I'm laying in my blue, the light blue there, getting my brush wet again and getting some more blue and starting from the top. And going to drag it out. Um, someone says, Laura, hi from Long Island. And, um, oh, someone says, I'm joining from San Francisco today, painting along. Awesome to have you painting along. Um, I've been to San Francisco once, um, a long time ago, <laughs> but I would like to go again someday. It was really, really fun. Okay, so I am dragging this blue down along the sides of the pink, rinsing my brush and getting it a little bit dry so it's not loaded and kind of trying to just get some blue down along the edge of my circle. So you can see it faded right here, but then I'm dragging it down along the sides. Michelle is joining us from Pittsburgh today. Welcome, Michelle, good to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so we've got our layer of pink laid in. You can see it's faded up towards the sky and kind of lightens as it goes. 
and then we have our light blue here. I want this light blue to kind of be shifted down a little bit, so what I'm going to do is give it a chance to dry, and then we'll put in another layer and just slowly drag it down. But while this is drying, let's work on our layer, our first layer for the mountains, and give this time to set, um, and then I'll be able to work on a sky gradient a little bit more once it's dry. So as we work on the mountains, I want you to keep in mind that uh, we're not painting just straight lines um, to where these look like triangles. Um, mountains are going to have different ridges and different shapes and not just all look the same. Um, the same with the, the other parts of the mountains. If there's forests or if there's you know different parts that are uneven, they're not going to be a straight line either. So it just gives a little bit more realistic look to it. Um, so we're going to be using Payne's Gray for this. Um, and again, this is, I'm using today the um, Premium Watercolor Travel Set by Gravy. And um, you can find this in the link in the comments. And um, when you click that link, it will take you to all of the supplies that I'm using today. Um, and if you shop with us today during this live stream, any purchase you make, you will get a free canvas Gravy tote bag with your purchase. So that's really cool. Make sure you click on that and check out what I'm using. So to get started off with the mountains, let's dip our brush into the water, make sure it's loaded with plenty of water and we're getting the Payne's Gray um, wet right now. And if you don't have Payne's Gray, you can use black, but um, just use a little bit of black. So what we're going to do to make sure we don't have um, you know, too much water on our brush is you can, once it's loaded with, with your black or your paint gray, you can take it and dab it on your paper towel. You can see it kind of lets off a little bit of extra water. And that way you're ready to go into the mountain area without getting a huge puddle of water. We want enough to where we can drag it out and move that paint around, um, but not too much to where it's just pooling up there. Um, so I'm going to be kind of pushing this paint around against um, that outline that we've left for the mountains. And if you make some straight lines, um, just kind of go upwards with your brush to get a little bit more of a, um, an illusion that there's, you know, something else there, not just a straight line. See, you can see that mine is... Um, I pushed up with the bristles and it created that line that isn't straight. It's kind of a little bit of like bumps and ridges and makes it a little more interesting to see. Um, so I'm getting plenty of paint here because we're going to end up getting this very dark. This is the first layer. So don't worry if it's looking a little bit light. We'll make another layer on this, one or two more layers to get that, that dark contrasting color that we want. And I'm just going in and laying in those shapes along the horizon. Pick up more paint. Um, we're moving along quite fast so that your um, the rest of this doesn't dry too much and we don't have too many harsh lines. And I'll show you some tips like right here. We'll come back to it and we'll kind of soften that up and even it out a bit. So don't worry about that if you have any places that look like that on your painting. You can see how pretty this paint looks against the um, orangish pink that we laid down. And once you get over to the edge, just make sure you are working slow enough to be able to control your brush and drag that paint along the edge of your circle that you've outlined. So I'm picking up paint and laying it in, dipping my brush if I need more water on my paint, and laying in some more of this dark color. We're going all the way down to the bottom of the circle. And as you can see, as I get up towards this area that I've already painted, I'm kind of, you know, swirling my brush in circles to help that paint spread and not um, just laying a, you know, a flat line over top of the previous area that we've done. I'm 
don't worry if your circle or whatever shape you're using it, you're not, you know, perfectly going up to the lines. This is going to be a little bit of a loose painting and that, you know, that can actually end up making it just look very nice and um, very loose feeling. So I'm coming back up here. This part of the mountain has already dried. So I'm going to be kind of dragging this paint. My brush is still a bit wet and kind of dragging this paint and doing circular motions to kind of make that blend into the other um, layer a little bit more. And then we're going to let this dry and work on the sky, laying in another layer in the sky. Okay, so I'm really happy with that, how that is looking. So, um, Mira Arians, hi from the UK. Thanks for joining us. Rosemary is joining us from Washington. Kathleen says, I just ordered the little kit. Awesome, this travel watercolor set is such a great set. It comes with everything you need to start getting painted. Um, today's um, painting for reference that I did was actually done on the paper that came with this travel set. Um, it's a really great size for experimenting, but also this entire set is very easy to take with you if you want to paint outdoors, which is something I'm looking forward to once the weather warms up here in Colorado. Okay, so remember if you are interested in checking out um, this watercolor set, this um, watercolor pad that I'm using, this larger paper is cold press watercolor pad, or the detail brushes, it's actually a set of 11, um, but the two that I'm using today is from that set. Just go ahead and click on that live link there in the comments, it will take you to our live shopping and any products that you purchase during this live stream today you will also get a free gravity tote bag with your purchase. So make sure if you're planning on trying out something or um, stocking up on your supplies that you do that during this live so that you can get that free gravity tote bag. It's a pretty cute gift. Okay, so um, as you can see, this layer right here is drying. We are going to go back and start working on our sky again. So if you are joining us, let us know. I'd love to to answer any questions you might have, and I'd love to know if you're painting along with us. Okay, so let's turn our painting back over. Um, and let's see. So we're gonna be laying in some more blue, um, and I'm going to be getting ready to um, pick up that blue in my brush, but in order to prep the paper so that it blends in smoother, and there's no harsh lines in our gradient here, I'm going to wet this paper. And I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be doing it from the pink and going up towards the blue. That way I'm not dragging the blue. If I were to go the opposite way, it would be dragging the blue down. But I want to just work with the pink first and then go to the blue. That way, when we turn it back this way and bring the blue down, we can control how far the blue goes down. So starting with the pink to get it wet, We'll be doing the wet on wet te technique so that we can get this paper wet all the way up towards the top of the circle and um, then can lay in our blues and then eventually we'll be laying in our dark Payne's gray at the very top where our stars will go. So it is wet right now and you have to work quite quickly um, to do this before things dry. So we are getting our brush wet, dipping it in the light blue and I'm going to be starting again at the top the circle and dragging this paint down. Make sure that you keep in mind you can add to this. You can add another layer so it doesn't have to be extremely saturated and you know very bright blue. I want it to slowly fade in to this pink and give off a very soft um, candy cotton feel to it. So it's kind of like a fluffy, soft blending of colors, not just a line of blue and a line of pink. So getting that blue and it helps to start at the top because then you can just drag that color down, down into the pink. And you can see kind of my, my motions. Um, I'm thinking of like wispy clouds. Um, the sky is just lit up with color um, and sort of kind of bringing it down in a loose way. Um, you can see in our, in our, um, uh, example painting, 
this blue sort of comes down and has parts where it's not solid. Um, and then we're going to be layering in our darker color, kind of making that wisp down into the picture so it sort of gives this this feel that night is coming and you know you have this beautiful sunset but you also have the stars that are just starting to appear in the sky. Okay, so I do want this blue to come down just a little bit more, kind of bringing it down here and then I'll soften those edges of where the blue meets to the pink. Rinse my brush so I don't have any color in it. You can dab it off. And then you come down here and kind of just work your way, work this paint out towards the pink. So you don't have any harsh lines and it's sort of, um, it's just like a gentle hint of blue coming down into the light part of the pink. And I do want a little bit more of that blue coming down towards the edge. So I dipped my paint brush into the paint and I'm dragging that, kind of making another layer down. And you can see it sort of is, um, you know, down further on the edges compared to up here in the middle. Is the travel um, set the same? Is the travel set the same one used a couple of weeks back with the night nice sky looking up through the trees? This is the same travel set. Yes, you can get so many colors from this travel set. And that's part of why I enjoy doing these tutorials, showing you how to mix specific colors that you're wanting. Um, so today we did use this travel set. This is the premium watercolor travel set by Grabby. And we mixed our own pink today with a bit of orange to get this a beautiful color for the sunset. And then we're also using this light blue and then we'll be using this Payne's gray um, for the mountains, but also the dark starry sky along the top edge. And um, you can find that in the link in the chat. Uh, make sure if you um, use that link today during this live stream, any purchase that you make today during the live stream, you get a free gravity tote bag with your purchase. All right, so, um, so Gail says, thanks, looks like I only need the paper this time. Yes, and today I am using paper from um, Grabby's watercolor pad. This is the cold press paper. Um, so it, it's very beautiful and I'm loving the way that the paints are acting on this paper. I'll hold this up so you can see. I love the way this pink has dried and kind of spread out. If you can see those those lines, the the texture of it is just very beautiful to work with. Okay, so while this blue is drying, we are going to do another layer on our mountains. Your mountains should be dry enough to, to do it, to work on it. So let's go ahead and lay in our next layer. I'm using the number six brush still. Um, we're saving the number four brush for the stars, which we'll be doing at the very end. So let's go ahead and lay down some more Payne's Gray. If you don't have Payne's Gray today, you can use black. You can even, if you don't like how dark black is, you can mix black with a little bit of blue to get a softer dark color. Um, so my Payne's Gray, making sure it's wet, dipping it in there, just applying it, going up, moving up towards the peaks of the mountains. Making sure these lines that I'm making are not just straight lines. Um, gives it more of a realistic landscape effect. Um, and this mountain range that I'm um, basing this on is uh, the Flatirons in Boulder, Colorado. So if you don't have mountains that you are wanting to paint, you can just make up your own. And if you're not happy with how they look, because this is such a dark color, you can actually go in and add a little bit of shape as you're going along. So you can kind of just push up places that you want to be, you know, a little bit different and kind of just tweak it as you're going along. As long as your pink is dry, you can work with this layer and make those mountains look exactly how you want. Going right up to the edge of the circle, dragging the paint down, loading my brush again with the paint. You can see this is getting pretty dark now, this layer, and kind of just spreading that out. <clears throat> and um, as we are working towards the bottom, I want you to notice I'm not just laying in, you know, lines of dark color like that. I'm actually pushing my brush around 
not too hard because I don't want to scrub away or mess with the bottom layer, but I just want this to dry in a way that kind of promotes the and helps the paint spread as it dries and not just pull up in one area. All right, we're almost done with filling in this next layer of the mountains, getting it to be dark and you know, really good contrast to the sky. Um, Megan says, I like mixing a tiny bit of Payne's Gray in with my blue so it has a similar tint. Yes. So we will actually be doing that for the sky just a bit to help our blue part of the sky, our light blue, fade into the darker, starry part of the sky. And I'll show you how to do that. All right, almost done getting that paint, pushing it up towards the mountain peaks, making sure that there's any parts that maybe feel a little bit too just straight, kind of adding a little bit of, of um, shape there with the very tip of the bristles, kind of pushing that paint straight up. There we go. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So while we let this part dry, we are going to be going in and um, wetting the top of the sky again. Um, but since we have our blue laid down and we want that blue to be very noticeable, we're going to just very slowly add um, and drag down that dark Payne's gray um, so that we can just give a hint of the night sky. It's not going to be overtaking our painting. It's going to be just a tiny detail. So this right here, we have our um, example painting. So you can see the night sky is there, but it's a very tiny detail. It's just a very tiny section of the sky. And we mostly really just want to give the effect that it's, you know, it's turning um, darker and, you know, the sun is going down fast and all these beautiful colors, but then the stars are popping out also. So be careful not to drag your hand into the part of the mountains you just did. Um, you want to be mindful of, of what is wet on your paper. So as we get going on the sky, kind of just keep your hand off of that part. Um, this part of the sky should be dry now. So let's take our large brush again, size six. This is again from the 11 piece miniature detail paintbrush set from Grabby, which you can find in the link in the comment. If you shop live today with any purchase you make using the links in the comment, then you get a free Gravy canvas tote bag with your purchase today. Um, so size six, we're gonna get it wet and um, wet our sky. Um, again, as we're doing this gradient, we are doing wet on wet technique. So we're wetting our paper and then using our wet paint um, to slowly um, bring that paint down into the other colors and help it blend together in a more smooth effect than um, if you do the wet on dry, which means you just start taking your paint and you color or you paint on top of the dry paper, it won't blend in as smoothly and you'll have a lot of harsh lines. So let's start at the top of this blue and we're just wetting the edges with a clean wet brush. So I don't have any color in my brush. I am just gently wetting the edges and I'm going down um, because this will be just a little strip of dark color that we're adding. So I'm wetting more than what I need so that it will help that color kind of um, bleed and onto the paper. So we have our light blue and I'm going to be mixing some light blue with the Payne's Gray. So take that light blue, get a little bit of your dark color Payne's Gray or black um, you just want it to be not quite so dark, um, but kind of a happy medium color between the blue, light blue, and the Payne's Gray, or the dark color that you're using. Um, Chris Ross Artwork says, wish I was painting along. I wish you were painting along also. I would love to see if you watch the replay and, and you know, do it afterwards. Um, please share with us on Instagram what you've done and tag Grabby Official so we can see, um, you know, what you paint along with this tutorial. That'd be awesome. 
So I'm starting along the edge and I'm adding this darker color and I'm just very gently touching the paper with the tip of this paintbrush. I'm going to rinse and get all of the color off of my brush and I'm drying my brush off, just dabbing it on the paper towel. That way I can come down here to these edges and pull them down like we did earlier with the light blue into the pink. Now we're doing that same technique with a stark uh, mixture of the light blue and the Payne's gray. I want just gently pulling it down. And we will be doing um, another layer of this. So don't worry if it's not dark enough, we will eventually get it there. We're just doing it very carefully so we can try our best to control where the watercolor goes. Rinse your brush and dry it off again. If you have any edges that are a little bit too rough, I'm softening the edges along here um, on the right and left of the paper where I kind of drag the paint down a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more soft along this part where it goes into the pink. Okay, so we'll kind of give that a, a few seconds to dry and we'll put another layer on. Um, so I just want to remind you, you can find everything that I'm using today in the links that's in the comment. And that will take you to a page that shows um, links for these detail brushes. It will take you to um, see what kind of paper we're using, which is the watercolor pad, cold press, and also this watercolor travel set by Gravy. So you can shop there live right now and every purchase made during this live, you will get a free canvas tote bag, a Gravy tote bag with your purchase. Okay, so it looks like the sky is almost dry. It's dry enough to where I can lay in a little bit more of this dark color. So I am taking that dark color that we mixed, the mixture of light blue, um, with the Payne's Gray. And I wanna make sure it's not, um, my brush isn't loaded too much. So I'm loading it up with that and then I'm going to dab it on my paper towel just a little bit. So it gets off all of the extra and it won't pull up. And we're going to go in and um, start at the very top and work our way down that way. It's darker up top and we drag that paint down. So you can see there's another layer of the dark color and after this, um, we'll probably drag that darker um, mid-shade down again, and then we'll apply our dark color. And you'll get to see kind of the effect that that gives. All right, so I'm softening the edges. I've rinsed my brush, dried it, so I can just drag this darker mid-tone into the sky. Don't worry about coloring and filling the whole thing. We're just kind of making it wispy lines um, down into the sky and it creates a really nice uh, effect where it's not any solid colors it just give, gives hints of these different colors mixing and um, fading into each other in the sky. Um, so now I'm going to take my dark Payne's Gray, get my brush wet, get that Payne's Gray and it has a lot of paint in it right now. It's very dark so in order to make sure that I do not uh, mess this part up by having too much paint and creating a puddle of dark color that will drown out the bright color, I'm going to take that and dab it on my paper towel and release some of that extra paint. So um, it's better to start off with a little less than what you need and work your way up to dark. And as soon as you touch the paper, you should see that you're still able to control it. So you don't have too much to where you can't control it and it's just a puddle going everywhere. It needs to be just enough to where it's laying down onto the paper and you can spread it and do the best that you can do to control it. But um, it is going to spread a little bit. That's part of the, the effect of doing the wet on wet. But you just wanna make sure you don't have puddles where it's running in into other things and kind of muddying up everything else. Just want to say thanks for this. I'm really enjoying the tutorials. Well, thank you, Gail. I'm really happy that you're enjoying this. Really happy to have you here. All right, so I rinse my brush and I'm going to kind of um, soften the edges again like we've done for all the other colors that we lay in. And 
And if you need to rinse your brush and dry it off again, you can go ahead and do that because you don't want to just keep spreading the color around. You kind of just want to pick it up and, and make it lighter, um, kind of just gently dragging it down and softening those edges. And see, this is a little bit dark, so I'm rinsing my brush and I'm going to try to dab that out a little bit. I, I do like some of the color coming down here, but I don't want it to be overwhelming and take away from that pink. Okay, so we're getting close to the darkness that I need um, in order for the, the stars to shine. So I'm gonna do one more layer of dark color along the top. And so get your brush wet, dab it in your dark color, and dab it on your paper towel to release some of that extra water and paint. Um, so, let's see, Dear Julie Julie says, I have this to use in my junk journal this month. So excited, thank you, Grabby. Oh, that's so cool. That'll be awesome, you should share that with us on Instagram so we can see what you've made. Okay, so I have my dark color and I'm dabbing it on my um, paper towel and I'm going to just start at the very top and go along and I'm dabbing it in there and my paint from before is still wet, my paper is still wet. So I'm just carefully going along that edge and letting that color onto the paper just along the edge. So now it's, you can see it's kind of moving down the page and kind of spreading. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with this. I am going to um, wet my brush, dry it off really good, and just kind of bring some of this dark color a little bit down on the edges. Make sure we have a little bit of darkness coming down onto the blue that was dragged down along each side. You can see as it dries, there are parts that will uh, maybe be a little bit lighter, and if you want to go ahead and fill those in, just dra grab a little bit of paint. You can kind of dab it on there, fill in those lighter spots, so that at the very top of this, you have um, more of a uh, darker contrasting color where we'll be laying in our stars. So I've rinsed my brush and dried it, and I am kind of helping to move that paint around that I just put on there. Okay, so this is good. Um, our last step will be laying in the stars. Um, so I just want to remind you that there are the link in the comments, um, is our live shopping. If you shop with us today, make a purchase during this live stream, uh, you will get a free gravity tote bag with your purchase. So here you can see we're letting our sky dry just a bit before we lay in the stars. Um, here is our example painting. Um, and this is done on paper that came with the Gravy Premium Watercolor Travel Set. So this pad of paper is awesome to take with you if you want to paint outdoors. Um, this set is compact enough to take with you almost anywhere. Um, it folds up very nicely. Um, it's also great to use indoors like I do. And I love painting small, so I do enjoy this tiny paint, painting paper at home also. So it's good for both options. Um, and today's paper that we are using for the larger version of this painting is from the Gravy Watercolor Pad Cold Press. And make sure if you are interested in trying this out and you use the link during this live stream, you'll get the free Gravy tote bag with your purchase during the live stream. You can find that link in the comments. Um, okay, dear Julie Julie says, I will share. Thank you. Yes, awesome. Make sure you tag us on Instagram, Grabby Official. And you also say, so pretty. Our local hills and mountains are very, very covered in snow here in Southern California. Wow. And then um, also say, great items in the kit. Yes, loving these items. It comes with. Like I said, the pad of mini watercolor paper comes with a travel paintbrush, comes with the um, woodless pencil. It's in a case to keep everything else clean. It comes in this cute little bag that everything fits in it, drawstring bag. 
and it also has the pencil sharpener and eraser. Um, and to be able to see what colors you have, it has this swatch set that you can fill out yourself. So I loved filling this out and seeing how the colors, um, you know, dried and, and the different gradients that I could get with them. So make sure you use that link in the comments to shop today and during this live stream, if you make a purchase, you get a free grabby canvas tote bag with your purchase. All right, so it looks like the sky is dry enough for us to work with. Um, you want to make sure before you start on it that there are no puddles. If you have puddles on your paper, wait for it to dry because you don't want to be picking um, the paint off of the lower uh, layers that we've just, you know, been working very hard to slowly blend. Because um, right now we're going to be laying in our stars. And today we are not um, using acrylic paint. Today we're using white watercolor paint and I'm going to show you a tip for using white watercolor paint over top of colors like this um, to get them to show up, to get the white watercolor paint to show up, but also um, to give kind of a subtle um, glowing star effect. So now that this is dry, um, dry enough to work with, we are going to be mixing our white paint. So I will show you how to do that so that you are ready to lay in those stars. So now we're using our number four Gravy Detail Brush, and this is from the um, Miniature Detail Paintbrush Set. I'm getting it wet, so it has plenty of water, and I'm going to show you how I'm doing this. This is the white watercolor that we're working with right now. So we're getting it wet, but we're going to be mixing it much more than we would other colors because I want to create a thick, white watercolor with this. Kind of more like a paste and not just watery paint. It's going to be thicker like a paste. And you can see it's already starting to come together. And when I try to pick up that paint, you can see it, um, you know, how thick it is on that brush. But I actually want it to be a little bit thicker than that so that it's ready for me to grab and work with. So I'm getting my brush a little bit more wet and doing circular motions to try to Encourage that water to mix in with the paint. Twisting my brush to kind of release some of the excess paint out of it and I can rework that, mixing it in. Okay, so now you can see it's very thick. It almost um, is as thick as some acrylic paints that you can work with. It isn't going to be quite as bright as acrylic, acrylic paint, but it will lay down very nicely. So this is my size four brush. I'm making sure that I have plenty of paint in my brush and I'm going to go into the sky and we're going to start laying in the area that the stars will be at. So because this is a sunset with the stars just starting to peek out, we are going to make sure that we don't cover the sky with stars. We're only keeping it to the very dark parts kind of getting um, a little sneak peek at the stars beginning to shine. So let's go in and we are going to be making a little dab of white. And then I use my finger to go ahead and kind of dab that. And you can see it, it just leaves a little bit of a white mark behind. I'm going to do that for some other places that I want the stars to be at. Just gently dab it with your finger I, I'm not trying to erase it or pull all the paint off. I just want it to be just, just ever so slightly there. And I guess part of dabbing it with your finger is it, it softens the edges, it kind of pushes the paint out, and it also picks up a little bit of the paint onto your finger. Um, so you're not left with just a hard white line, like a dot. Um, right now we're kind of making the the um, outer like shininess of the star, making it look like it glows. So that's what we're laying in right now. Make sure you get a few star details up there into the very dark places. Soften those edges up by dabbing it. And then once you have that, we're going to rinse our brush just to make sure we don't have any of that Payne's gray picked up onto our brush. So rinse your brush, pick up your white again. If it's dry, 
Then you need to mix that up again and get it into a thick paste. I have quite a bit left here um, that wasn't quite dry, so I'm just refreshing that with a little bit more water, making it very, very thick, because now we're going to go over top of what we just did with our dabs of white watercolor, and we're going to lay in the little tiny, tiny star details. Okay, so once it gets thick, and you can pick that up. I want you to keep in mind this is going to be smaller than the little, the little dabs that we just did. We want these stars to be in the middle of those, and then these dabs that are on there right now will be the shining part of the star. So I have plenty of paint in my brush loaded in there so that when I just very carefully touch the tip of this, it will put enough paint on there um, to be um, noticeable, but not overtake the entire thing. Because I don't want us to look at this painting and think, oh, there's stars. I want the first thing to be, look at that beautiful gradient. Look at the beautiful you know, pinks blending into the blues. And then the stars kind of just finish it off with the details. So just go in there, dab in the very center of the star details that you've just laid in. And I'm just very carefully touching the paper. I'm going to get a little bit more white. And I'm going to go in and lay in a few stars that are not glowing just in the very darkest part of the sky. And these I'm trying to make tinier so that it looks like we have more than just, you know, these, these larger glowing stars. And if you are noticing that you, um, your stars aren't quite bright enough, the layer that you're just now laying in, let that dry what you've just done. And it dries pretty quickly because it's just a tiny, tiny dab of paint. You can go in and get more paint on your brush and then do another layer over top of that star. So I'll show you what I mean. Try to stay on the same spot that you've just laid it down and go over it with another layer. And you'll see that it, you can work your way up to being a bit brighter. And this is a nice way to not have to worry about having any other paint. You can use all of the paint from your paint set um, without having to worry about having acrylic paint or any type of white gel pen or anything like that. You can use your watercolor paints to lay in bright star details. So just a reminder to everyone the links in the link in the comments will take you to our shopping um, that has um, all of the info and the links to this watercolor travel set that I've used today. Also, the um, detail brush set that I've used. I used size six and four today, um, but there are eleven sizes total in that set. And then also, it will take you to um, the paper that I used. Um, for today's painting, which is from the watercolor pad, the cold press. So that completes our painting tutorial today. I hope you've enjoyed this candy cotton sky watercolor tutorial. I would love to see what you create. If you joined along with us or if you watched the replay to create, please share with us on Instagram what you've, what you've made. You can tag us, Gravy Official. Um, again, my name is Chrissy Sparks. And I'm very happy to be here with Gravy today sharing this tutorial with you. Um, make sure if you um, want to try out any of these products that I've used today, you purchase them at the link in the comments and you get a free Gravy tote bag today with your purchase if you make that purchase during the live stream. Um, follow us on Instagram to find out more information on our next up and coming events. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel um, grab his YouTube channel here and we look forward to seeing what you create and to having you join us next time. 
um, keep in touch and let us know um, what you make and reach out. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments and we'll try to get back to you with those answers. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's see, we have, we have someone saying, oh wow, I love that technique. I would never have thought to, the, to do the stars like that. I love it. Awesome, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Um, Linda says, I picked up the brushes today. Thank you for the tutorial. Awesome, I love these brushes. The, one of my favorite brushes is the smallest size, which has five zeros. And it's, you can see the difference um, with what we've used today. <laughs> the small one is perfect for details and making those tiny star details. But today I wanted to show that you can also use larger brushes for tiny details and kind of give tips on how to do that. So I'm glad you enjoyed that. And dear Julie, Julie says, thank you. Evan says, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining us. And I hope you all have a great day. We'll see you next time.